In today's video, I'll go over how I take the calligraphy I create with pen and paper and digitize it into a raster and vector file. To do any design on a computer, you will need a raster or vector file. Vector files are a necessity if you're printing in letterpress or foil press for invitations, for instance, or business cards. And they're also a necessity if you're designing a logo for a client. The great thing about vector files is that they can be scaled infinitely and so they can be as large or as small as you need for any given project. Raster files, on the other hand, aren't infinitely scalable. So if you increase the size of the image past a certain point, it will break down in resolution. I still recommend raster files and use them whenever I can in my projects because digitizing calligraphy into a raster file tends to preserve the hand wrought nature of the calligraphy better than vectorizing it. I'll go over how to digitize your calligraphy into both formats so you have both options available to you when you're working on your project. So let's get started. Let's start with how to create your calligraphy to begin with to save yourself a lot of headache and time when you're importing the file and trying to digitize it. Most importantly, you'll want to make sure that you're using white paper. It can be any type of paper, just make sure it's white. And secondly, you'll want to use black ink. Once you digitize a file, you can change it into whatever color you want, so don't worry about that. Today I'm going to use one of my favorite markers for monoline lettering and it's from Tombow. Once you've gotten your calligraphy just right, you can scan the calligraphy into your computer. Any scanner will do as long as it can scan in a resolution of at least 600 dpi. For those of you who don't have a scanner or don't want to go through the hassle of whipping out the scanner, you can also use your smartphone camera. I'm going to use my iPhone here and take a photo. What's most important here is that you find a spot with a lot of natural lighting and you take a photo as close up as possible without cropping the calligraphy. Open up your file in Photoshop and first things first, as always, you want to make a backup copy of the original file and you can do that by duplicating the background layer, making sure it's locked and then hiding it. This way, if we want to revert to the original file, we'll always have a copy to go back to. We want to convert our image into a purely black and white file. So to do that, go up to Image, select Mode, and select Grayscale. You'll probably get two pop-up windows. Make sure to select Don't Merge, and then Discard. Now that your image is in grayscale, we want to make it as purely black and white as possible and eliminate any shades of gray. And to do so, we'll go up to image again, select adjustments, and then select levels. And you'll see three sliders. You'll want to drag the sliders on each extreme towards the center. The slider on the right, as you move it towards the center, will make all the whites in the image whiter and the slider on the left, that's black, will make all the darker tones in the image blacker. I always start with the slider on the right and try to get the background as white as possible before dragging the black to meet it in the middle. Once your whites are as true white as possible and your blacks are as dark as possible, select OK. Now we have a perfectly black and white image, which will make the background erasing process so much easier. Here is how I delete all the white background at once. Go up to select, select color range, and with your eyedrop cursor, click anywhere that is white. You can keep the fuzziness at around 87 and press OK. What you've done is select all the white parts of the image and now you can just press backspace to delete them. Now to the blind eye, this looks super clean. It looks like the only thing that is left on our image is the calligraphy, right? Unfortunately, even if you follow all the steps perfectly, there are parts of the image that are left over and not fully deleted. This can be from the texture of the paper or from dust, but we want to make sure any random specks are gone before we export it. So to make those specks visible, what we're going to do is add a stroke to what we have left over of our image. 
Remember that our image currently is in grayscale, so we want to convert it back to a color mode. To do so, go up to Image, select Mode, and select RGB Color. To add a stroke, select the Effects icon in the Layers panel at the bottom, and select Stroke. For color, you can really choose any color you'd like. I'm gonna choose bright red, but it can be any color that will show up against the gray and white background. Make sure that the position of the stroke is outside, and you'll see that as you toggle the size, more and more red specks come up. Once you're happy with the size of the stroke, press OK, and then select the eraser icon on the left toolbar, and just go in and erase the specks that you see. After you're done cleaning everything up, you can either disable the layer effects or you can clear it all together. And now your file is ready to export as a raster file. You can export it as a PNG so your file has a transparent background or you can export it as a JPEG with a white background. I'm going to export the file as both. If you just need the raster file, you can stop the tutorial here because you're done and good to go. But if you want to vectorize it, we're going to now open up Illustrator. Create a new blank artboard. It can be any size. I'm using a US letter size artboard here. You're going to import the raster file that we just exported. You can import the PNG or the JPEG, it doesn't matter. And to do so, go up to File, select Place, and select the image file. Click and drag the image to place it on the artboard. Up on the top left, you'll see the resolution of the image in PPI. You can make the image as big as you'd like, just make sure that you're keeping the PPI at 300 or higher. Now make sure the image is selected, then press the Image Trace button, then press OK. Now we're going to open up the Image Trace panel where we will tweak the vectorization of the file. Let's start in the Advanced section and toggle the Path Slider. The higher the percentage paths are, the more complex your image will be, and the lower the paths are, the more simple the image will be. You want to find a happy median because if you go too high, then the paths can look very rough. And if you go too low, then the paths can end up looking very boxy and geometrical. Now the threshold slider controls the cutoff where the pixels are converted to black. In layman's terms, especially because our image is set to pure black and white, this means that when the threshold is higher, the calligraphy will look thicker, and when the threshold is lower, the calligraphy will look thinner. I usually don't touch the corners or noise, but you can play with that too. I have the corners at 75% and the noise at 25 pixels. And this is very important. Under Options, select Ignore White. This will make sure that there is no white background on your vector file and it's just the black calligraphy. Select expand and now you have your vector file. You can ungroup the words and play around with the layout. You can change the color too. A vector file is super versatile, so let me know in the comments how you plan on using your vectorized calligraphy or the raster file of your calligraphy. Also, if you found this tutorial helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you like this video and click subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.